Hi, I'm Jeremy Gates, Managing Director of Gaia Construction. Today we'd like to speak about heat pumps. If you're wondering what a heat pump is and how it works, we're here to talk to Adam Major. Adam is the uh, National Sales Director of the Green Power Company. They're renewable energy experts. Thanks for joining us today, Adam. Pleasure, Jeremy. What's a heat pump and how does it work? A heat pump is a, a really efficient electric device, basically, that we use to heat water. Um, a heat pump works kind of in the reverse way that a fridge works. A, a fridge is trying to push heat out of the unit, whereas a heat pump is trying to draw ambient temperature into the system and via a compressor and a refrigeration cycle, um, it uses that to heat water. Does it still work on cold days or how does it, how yeah, does that work? Yeah, it does. So the refrigerants that are used, um, and there's, there's some varying refrigerants that are used in the units, but basically they've got super low boiling points in the minus degrees, minus 20, minus 30, minus 45 degrees. So even on a five, six degree day, which we you know occasionally see in the middle of winter, yeah. um, that refrigerant still thinks it's quite warm. So what can you use a heat pump for? What's... So generally to heat water. So um, the one brand of heat pump that we really love for our hot water systems is the Sandin unit. Yeah. Uh, Sandin is Japanese. Basically, it's a small capacity one kilowatt heat pump that plums up to a you know a couple of different size options on the tank. And you know, even without solar power, yeah. it's a super efficient unit, one of the most efficient on the market. Yeah. So, what else can we use them for? Uh, Hydraulic heating, swimming pools? Yeah. So, not, not necessarily the Sandin unit, but yeah. another range of products. Um, so, yeah, hydronic heating systems. So, floor heating, hydronic radiators. Again, the sizing is, is imperative in, in, in when that system is designed. Even swimming pools. Yeah. Um, you know, if you were talking to us ten years ago. We would have said focus on gas, gas is cheap, yeah. solar was relatively expensive. It's flipped on its head now. Yeah. We, gas is no longer cheap. We're looking at really efficient electric or all electric systems and ultimately looking at that solar integration. So you know, we want to run as much as we can in your home or business off your rooftop. So it links back to solar panels? Correct. And the hydronic heating systems that we do, I guess we've branded solar hydronics. Yeah. Because running generally off an electric heat pump, and you've got that solar integration on the running costs. So if you've got a full solar panel system on your roof and you're running hot water as well, mm -hmm. you're going to use all your power effectively, aren't you? you can, it's a, like a battery. Correct, correct. So, I mean, with a solar power system and a, and a heat pump system, whether it's hot water or a hot heat pump hydronic system, you know, heat pumps have a coefficient of performance depending on the ambient temperature. Yep. So, you know, um, you might be getting three or four times the power out of a heat pump. And what, what that means is, for every kilowatt of energy that a heat pump draws, it's outputting three or four or maybe more kilowatts of heat energy. Yeah. So where there's solar and the heat pump in the mix, you're multiplying your solar generation by, you know, three or four times potentially. Can you set the heat pumps to heat your hot water during the day when you're not at home? Correct, again, looking to squeeze operational efficiency out of everything you do. Timers are really important. So some of the units that we use have inbuilt timers. Yeah. Sometimes you'll have to install a time clock or something similar as a separate device, but you know you generally set these units to, to heat and run during prime solar conditions. So as a rule from about 10 till 3 p.m., 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, or you know you can exclusively provision solar to power certain circuits. Yeah. yeah. How much do they cost? Big question. Yeah, um, look, I mean looking in the hydronic heating space. At a certain level, at about the 20 kilowatt heat pump size, fairly comparable to your traditional gas boiler. Yeah. Um, as we get larger, I guess that is the one downfall in the heat pump space: is the bigger the heat pump, generally, you know, um, the more expensive they become. Yeah. Are they government rebates on heat pumps? There, there are in the hot water space. Yeah. Um, and a lot of our hydronic systems have hot water integration into them, so it's one unit that's heating your potable water and your hydronic heating. Yeah. Um, there's no rebates at this point on the straight hydronic heat pump installations, but where there's heat pumps um, heating your, your domestic hot water, yeah. there, there are nice government rebates yeah. available. What sort of maintenance do they require? Oh, look, again, every, every couple of years, you probably want to do a maintenance on a hydronic system, whether yeah. it's gas or electric heat pump, yeah. um, to make sure everything's operating and there's no, no issues. That, that's fairly standard. Um, on the hot water side of things, I mean, you've got really long-term warranties on these small capacity units yeah. now. So, you know, maintenance isn't really a big deal. Are they noisy and do they take that much room? 
Um, the Sandon unit, which we use for our hot water uh, heat pump systems, it's the most quiet, it's the quietest unit on the market. Yeah. Um, you, know, you would literally walk past it and have to do a double take to see if it, it was actually running here. Do they take up much room? Um, the Sandon unit, no, fairly compact and more mountable. Um, roof mountable even. Yep. The hydronic heat pumps, they can get quite large depending on, on the capacity of the units. Yep. So at about, again, the 20 kilowatt heat pump size, they're similar to an outdoor unit of an air conditioning system, a skin yep. system. As we get larger in the hydronic heat pump space or even this, the pool heat pump space, some of those large capacity units can get quite, yep. quite large. Yep. So spatially, uh, spatial designs is a, is a consideration. So if you're using it for a swimming pool, uh, does it work the same as a gas or is it slower as a smaller trip of heat? It, it is, gas will heat your pool a lot faster. Uh, the heat pump is a more of a gentle heat up cycle. Um, but again, you're probably looking at, as far as heating a pool with a heat pump, you're probably looking at a couple of degrees every hour. Yeah. You know, as a gentle heat up. So again, running that heat pump during the day when you've got solar yield, a heat pump in a swimming pool is going to extend your, your shoulder seasons out and maybe give you another, you know, three or four months of swimming yeah. time. At very little cost because you're yeah. doing it off your solar panel. Correct. And at that time of year, you'll be generating good power. Um, you're outside of peak solar generating times, but still more than enough to power a heat pump in the other daytime going on yeah. in the house. Yeah. With heat pumps, what should people look out for to make sure they're not getting ripped off or sold the wrong product? Um, look, the brand is key. Yeah. So where they're located, how they've been, how long they've been around, the, the technical support um, that they offer, and I guess that's hard as, as a consumer to, yeah. to find these things out at times. But when we're looking at a brand, they're the key things we look at. Um, also failure rates and warranty protection and this kind of thing is key. But it's, it's that after sales and engineering backup that we you know, need it and look yeah. for when we partner with a, a heat pump brand. Uh, Adam, thank you very much. Pleasure.